I'm very sorry not to be with you in person as you celebrate a hundred years of the DAC, but I do want to say an enormous thank you for all your work. Whilst none of you were serving on the DAC in 1919, I do know that it was the very first in the country and soon became known as one of the best, and I'm sure that's still true. I'm extremely grateful for your commitment, your time and your care, not least as amazing volunteers. And it's very impressive to see the great range of specialisms represented on the committee. Together, you play a significant role in the life of our diocese, and so a heartfelt thank you to all of you. In this diocese, as you know, we have almost 400 church buildings, and many of them are grade two star and grade one listed. Beautiful and inspiring historic buildings, much loved by local communities. And the challenge before us is how to ensure that the decisions we make about our buildings now honours the past and serves how we are to be God's church in the present, looking to the future. Our diocesan life vision is shaped around those words of Jesus from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. It's a vision to discover and share the transforming gospel of Jesus Christ so that people may know life in all its fullness. Within our theme of imagination and opening new paths to faith, we have a specific priority, which is about approaching the use, upkeep and future of our church buildings in bold and creative ways. This is a core strand in enabling us to live well all four of our life themes. And those are leadership, committed to transformation, imagination, opening new paths to faith, faith, living as adventurous followers of Jesus Christ, and engagement as we live out Christ's love and hope. It's a big vision because it's all about the big picture of the coming in of the kingdom of God. And this is the vision our church buildings must serve. So as I give thanks to the DAC and for all your work as you mark the end of one centenary and the start of another, I pray you will help us as the church in this diocese to live this vision well as you continue to offer worshipping communities your wisdom and expertise, keeping what it means for us to be the church at the heart of all you do. I particularly want to thank Henry Russell for all that he has given in his time as DAC Chair and thank you to David Ball as he picks up the baton and works with others to shape the next chapter. A huge thank you to both Henry and David for your time and dedication. And as I thank the DAC, I obviously want to take this opportunity to thank our excellent church buildings team, past and present. It's always uh, dangerous singling out names but I do want to mention and say thank you to Jonathan McEchney Jarvis. And in this present chapter, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Natalie and to Adam, supported by Catherine. Thank you for all the support you give to our worshipping communities, not least clergy and church wardens. Once again, I'm really sorry not to be with you in person, but I'm greatly looking forward to being with you for a DAC meeting later in the year. May God bless you in all your work and please know that I'm holding you in my prayers today and please celebrate well. <laughs>